Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today, I want to read some Anthony Norvell, and we're going to address how to release dynamic energy to achieve prosperity. Anthony Norvell was an amazing post New Thought teacher that wrote a ton of fabulous books, and a number of amazing lessons came from these. He's one of the very best teachers of the law of attraction and prosperity thinking, and his works are inspirational and are informative about how we can utilize the power of our minds to achieve real valid prosperity in our lives. We have several episodes where we've read some of the amazing teachings of Anthony Norvell, and this one is dedicated to desire and the energy of desire and how you can release this dynamic energy to achieve prosperity. Desire is man's prime driving force. Without this emotion, man would still exist in a primitive state in caves and trees. Desire is the dynamic emotion that causes man to achieve greatness. The human mind and body function at high levels of energy when the desires are activated in the right direction. If you use this positive emotion correctly, it can release dynamic energy that will cause you to achieve anything you really sincerely desire. Ask yourself these questions. Do you desire more money? Are you anxious for a better job? Do you want a new car, a new home, new furnishings? Are you eager to go into your own business? Do you desire love fulfillment, happiness in marriage? Do you desire greater knowledge, more mental power? These desires are natural and good. You should have them in common with all humanity. If you do not have such desires, then you will never have the dynamic energy needed to achieve fulfillment in your life. Let us study these desires and see how you may release hidden reserves of power within your mind and body giving you the ability to achieve the things you desire. The desire for food is what keeps the human body functioning. The desire for money leads one to the acquisition of material treasures and objects. The desire for wisdom causes men to evolve their minds and become intellectual, and in turn brings the race to new and higher realms of achievement. The desire for beauty causes artists to create masterpieces for the enjoyment of the world. Strong desires give great achievement. If you desire something strongly enough, you are already on the road to achieving it. Desire works its magic through the amazing power of the sympathetic nervous system. When you wish for something or desire it strongly enough, it becomes imprinted on your subconscious mind. The emotion is then transmitted to the nerves and muscles of your body, and you are impelled in the direction of achieving the things you desire. If you desire more money, you will be gradually led to doing things that bring you a fortune. If you desire friendship, you will act in such a way that others will be friendly towards you. Emerson said, if you wish a friend, be a friend. The law of desire works unerringly to bring you that which you want. But there is a method by which you may implement your desires and set up actions and reactions in your mind, which will make it easier to achieve the things you desire. Everyone thinks occasionally that he'd like to be rich, that he'd like to have a different personality or change his work or take a trip around the world. These are common desires of all humanity. This type of thinking that is weak and causal is not the strong type of desire which brings fulfillment. Your blueprint of destiny. To make your desires more positive and dynamic, I have discovered a method which I have used with success. I have given this million dollar secret to thousands of my students and they have also used it successfully to achieve seemingly impossible things in their lives. This same secret will work for you if you use it and have implicit faith that it will work. Write down your sincere heartfelt desires on a sheet of paper. This helps bring them out from the depths of the subconscious mind into the light of reality. Head the sheet of paper as follows. My blueprint of destiny, the things I desire in life. Here's a sample list of some of the things people desire. 
One, I desire more money to meet my needs. I would like to have the sum of $1,000 for immediate needs and the sum of $50,000 for an overall goal in the future. Two, I want a business of my own. State the type of business. Three, I wish to change the nature of my work. I want to be a success as. State here the type of work you prefer doing. Four, I desire my own home. Describe the type of house you want, number of rooms, location. Five, I want a new car. Make color and style. Six, I wish to create something artistic. State whether you wish a creative gift like painting, writing, music, or acting. Seven, I desire happiness in love and marriage and to find a suitable marriage partner with the following qualities. Name these. Eight, I desire an electric refrigerator. Nine, I desire a more magnetic and dynamic personality. Ten, I wish to take a trip on vacation to Hawaii or any other place you choose. Eleven, I wish to meet important people socially and in business who will help me achieve success. Then, on the bottom of this sheet of paper, write these words. I have faith that time is not law and that I can achieve the things I have here written in a short space of time. I shall read this list over every morning when I arise and every night when I retire. Then, keep this blueprint of destiny somewhere where you can see it every day and read it each morning and night. When you have achieved any of the things on the list, scratch them out and make out a new list. I even advocate that you completely rewrite your list every week, thus refreshing your subconscious mind as to the things you desire. How the Million Dollar Secret Worked for Me Let me show you how this million dollar secret worked its magic for me early in my career when I discovered it. I was 24 years of age when I learned this priceless secret. I made out my blueprint of destiny and like most young people brought in the age of the depression, material possessions meant a great deal to me. I put down on my list big and seemingly impossible things to achieve. I had faith that this power would work for me and I dared ask for the biggest and best. To test this power, I asked for some things that were seemingly impossible at that time of my life. It must be remembered that in the early 30s, it was impossible to get a job and difficult to make money. I had no known resources, no parents to turn to for help, no influential friends. I had only my faith in the power within my mind to achieve the things that I desired. I wrote down on my list, I desire the sum of $5,000 cash and $100,000 as an overall goal. I desire a beautiful home, a car, preferably the best a Rolls Royce and a career in writing. There were other things smaller in scope that I also listed. I read the list every morning and night and rewrote it in my own handwriting once a week. Within three months time, I made a contact with a group of magazines that contracted with me to do monthly articles for them. I began a large mail order business that soon began to pay off. The $5,000 came in one lump sum from this business I soon had 10 people working for me, and one day, driving down Sunset Boulevard, I saw a magnificent cream-colored Rolls-Royce for sale. It had belonged to the famous movie star Gilda Gray. She had paid $15,000 for it. I obtained it for $750 cash. In the Depression years, no one could afford such a car, and yet here I was, not only able to afford it, but having the audacity to believe my good fortune would continue indefinitely. And it did. I soon purchased a home for a small down payment. This home later sold for $100,000, although I paid considerably less in 1935. In a short time, I was meeting the most influential people in the motion picture industry. Louis B. Mayer, David O. Selznick, Irving Thalberg, Mervyn Leroy, and such stars as Clark Gable, Gary Cooper, Norma Shearer, Marion Davies, and hundreds of others. Mary Pickford invited me to a party at Pickfair where I met William Randolph Hearst and Lord and Lady Mountbatten, H.G. Wells, and many other world-famous celebrities. This was the beginning of the fulfillment of the desires I had written in my personal blueprint of destiny. As some of these things came true, I added others to my list, never once losing faith in the power that was manifesting these miracles for me. Carnegie Hall and Bronze Plaques if anyone had told me in my early years of struggle and poverty 
that I would one day become known as the 20th century philosopher of Carnegie Hall. I would have considered it a wild pipe dream. Later, when the owners of Carnegie Hall gave me two huge bronze plaques on the front of the hall announcing to the world that I was the 20th century philosopher, it was a dream come true. I knew then that I had discovered the million dollar secret that lies within the mind, in which every person, no matter how limited his circumstances, may also tap and use. One more illustration from my Hollywood cycle which will help you have more faith in the million dollar secret that can lead you to fame and fortune. A young Hollywood actor named Peter Lawford began attending some of our lectures with his mother, Lady May Lawford. He had hit a slump in his career, and at that time he certainly never dreamed of the great destiny fate had in store for him. He and his mother practiced all these principles taught in this book. When Peter was young, Lady Lawford helped heal his arm through her faith and courage. The doctors wanted to amputate Peter's arm, which had been severely injured, but Lady Lawford trusted the higher intelligence which she knew was in her son's mind. The arm was saved, and the doctors said it was truly a miracle of faith and prayer. One night Peter Lawford came to my home in Bel Air to a party given for Lady Thelma Furness and Mrs. Gloria Vanderbilt. That night marked the turning point of his destiny. I introduced him to a charming young lady named Patricia Kennedy, whose brother, John F. Kennedy, was a senator from Massachusetts. Three months later, Peter and Pat were married. Now Peter Lawford finds himself related to the President of the United States and is a frequent visitor to the White House. His career has gained new impetus and he is experiencing a measure of success in his personal and professional life that he probably never dreamed possible. The million dollar secret works. It can work its miracles for you. If you have faith in this invisible power within your own mind and consult it about the moves you are to make in life, it will guide you as unerringly as it does the birds and animals. It will give you power to achieve your destiny as it does to the trees and flowers and crops in the field. Let us examine some of the ways by which this higher mind works for your good. The Dynamic Life Urge there is a dynamic force back of life which works in all nature. It is the dynamic life urge. It gives you the will to live, the will to be, the will to create, the will to love. When you have a reason for living, this dynamic life urge becomes stronger and pushes you in the direction of your life goal. Ask yourself this question. For what do I live? It must be for some purpose other than just making money or eating or a desire to have children. There must be a, a higher purpose back of your life than merely a desire to achieve fame and fortune. When you have a master motive to do good for others, to evolve the world, to discover something for the good of the entire world, then the dynamic life urge flourishes and gives you energy and determination to achieve your goal. Edison's desire to serve humanity. What was Edison's motivating desire in life? Certainly it was not just to make money, although he lived to make millions of dollars through his numerous inventions. His life urge was to serve humanity, to give something of value to the world. This inner desire sparked his energy and made his mind so productive that he was able to create over 300 inventions that have enriched the entire world. His phonograph, his movie camera, and his electric light bulb are only three of his many inventions. Burbank had a dynamic life urge that was completely unselfish and universal, a desire to benefit the world through the creation of his new products in vegetables, fruits, and flowers. He released a constant flow of dynamic power from his higher mind that gave him inexhaustible energy and made him succeed so magnificently. Albert Schweitzer, the noted physician and surgeon, worked in the jungles of Africa to heal the sick. Surely his dynamic life urge is an altruistic one. He can make a fortune if he could open a clinic in some large city, but he prefers to help these unfortunate people who are far removed from the benefits of civilization. His reward? More than money can give, a deep inner satisfaction that he is doing something great for the world. Father Damien, the noted Catholic priest, worked with the lepers at Molokai in the South Pacific. Because their plight was so tragic and hopeless, he brought complete new techniques for the treatment of that dread disease. 
and sacrificed his life that others might live. Through his efforts, the modern treatment of this ancient scourge has removed most of the dread and danger of infection and made the lot of the leper a much easier one. The Light Bringers of the Universe Helen Keller and her work with the blind serves to illustrate magnificently how the dynamic life urge can be released to help the unfortunate. The movie made around her life, The Miracle Worker, shows the heroic struggle that this great woman made to achieve her high place in history as the light bringer to the blind. Jane Addams of Whole House in Chicago was another example of how the dynamic life urge can be channelized into creative work for those who are poor and underprivileged. Miss Adams turned her own home over to the poor children who had no one to care for them while their parents were at work. Although the doctors had given this frail, sickly woman only six months to live, Jane Adams became so engrossed in her humanitarian work that she became strong and healthy and lived into her late 80s. She wrote in her autobiography, I lived to bury four of the doctors who had pronounced my death sentence. Her life force was strengthened by her desire to help those who were unfortunate, poverty-stricken, and sick. Beethoven and how he released the dynamic life urge. One sees very little connection between the dynamic life urge and the ability to compose great music, and yet in the case of Beethoven, this great force found expression in his music through his unselfish acts in life. The story is told of how Beethoven was walking with a friend one cold winter night in a city in Germany where he was giving a concert the next night. Suddenly he heard someone trying to play his sonata in F and doing a very bad job of it. Then he heard a girl's voice cry out, Oh, I cannot do justice to it. It's so beautiful. Feeling sorry for the girl, Beethoven knocked on the door of the house. A young man answered it and admitted him. A young lady sat at the piano and it was obvious to the great composer that she was blind. Without telling them who he was, Beethoven asked if he might play the composition for her. Instantly, as his fingers touched the keyboard, they both realized it was the master himself playing. When Beethoven had finished, the girl begged him to play more. The composer looked up at the soft, silvery moonlight pouring through the window and said, I shall compose a sonata to the moonlight. His fingers glided over the keyboard and he played for a long time when he had finished beethoven said i shall call this composition moonlight sonata then beethoven gave two tickets to the young couple for his concert the next evening and he hurried home and sat up the rest of the night writing down the notes for his new composition many times as in this instance from beethoven's life great inspiration and dynamic creative energy flow from a desire to do something good for another person Part of our million dollar secret is bound up in this dynamic life urge. The desire to help your family, to educate your children, to serve the world, to evolve the standards of civilization a step higher, to bring peace and brotherhood to the entire world. Power flows abundantly to meet all your needs in the moment you use your gifts and talents unselfishly for the good of others. There's a universal law which sets to work for us immediately. When we put ourselves in tune with this higher mind that is in the universe, if we follow the laws of nature, all things work for our eventual good. Marcus Aurelius said, All that is harmony for thee, O universe, is in harmony with me as well. Nothing that comes at the right time for thee is too early or too late for me. Everything is fruit to me that thy season brings. O nature, all things come of thee, have their being in thee, and return to thee. Do these things to release dynamic energy. 1. Set some goal for yourself that you're trying to achieve. Make that goal big enough so that it will excite your imagination and arouse tremendous interest. Your energies will rise in proportion to the needs you have. If you have a goal to make only $50 a week, this is not a very inspiring goal. You push that goal and set a figure such as $250 a week. Instantly, your subconscious mind will release the dynamic energy and the dynamic idea to make it possible to achieve the larger sum. 2. Have some person or persons in your life 
that you're trying to help. This can be your own mate, your children, your mother and father. Whatever it is that you're trying to do for others unselfishly will automatically give you greater energy and more stamina to endure and to persist. If you live just for yourself, it is unlikely that you will have more than just enough life force to exist. Florence Nightingale was the first woman in history to go out into battle to help nurse soldiers. She freed womankind from the restrictions of their sex and created a new and honorable profession for women. This frail woman was so inspired by her desire to help the sick that it gave her tremendous energy and vitality. 3. Find work that you really enjoy doing, and if you happen to be in work you despise, get out of it as soon as possible. Nothing will so quickly lower the curve of energy as being in your work you detest. It has been known to make some people chronically sick because they are constantly frustrated. This restricts the glandular action of the body and depresses the body organs. But if you are in work you love, your body cells sing with joy and health and energy. They are stimulated so that you constantly feel good. 4. Have hobbies that give you pleasure as well as relaxation. Dynamic energy is created when your mind is interested in doing something. It is vitally important that you have avocations as well as a vocation. The moments you give to painting, writing poetry or stories, modeling in clay, stamp collecting, rug weaving, or whatever hobby you indulge, are moments well spent, but they will serve to release energy which will make your regular work easier and less boring. 5. If you're not already in love with someone, fall in love as quickly as you can. Nothing helps release dynamic energy so quickly and potently as being in love. Science is now aware of the importance of this powerful emotion in our lives. Children thrive and are healthy when loved. When denied love, they are sickly and lacking in energy and interest. Later we shall learn more about this powerful emotion, for it is one of the big and important revelations of our million dollar secret. 6. Set daily goals for yourself that you are trying to achieve. If you are a salesman, set a certain number of sales. If an author set a certain number of pages you wish to write. If a student, a certain course of study which you do regularly. It has been found that the mind responds to the challenge of direct suggestion. If you know you are going to play 18 holes of golf, the body and brain see to it that the necessary energy and drive are created to carry you through that course. If a prize fighter builds himself up mentally to take on a certain opponent, his body will release the energy to carry him into that ring, facing formidable opposition as you achieve these small goals at first. Keep raising the level of your goal until you have reached a high peak of energy and achievement. 7. Each day when you start your activities, say a series of suggestions that will be energy boosters to your subconscious mind. Here are a few you might memorize and repeat every day when you feel the need of inspiration or greater mental or physical energy. I am strong and healthy. I can accomplish anything I desire. I am young and vital and my body now responds with new energy and vitality to do all my tasks today. I am happy, happy, happy. I find joy in my work and my life sparkles with interest and happiness. I have faith in myself, my work, and my destiny. I now extend this faith to the entire world. I am successful, well-liked, and attract friends to myself. I now radiate confidence, poise, and inner power. I love everyone I meet, and they will in turn love me. I am rich as any millionaire, with the gifts of mental and physical health, free estates of parks, and the golden gifts of friendship, love, peace, happiness, and beauty. Whenever you feel tired or discouraged or your energy is low, just stop whatever you're doing. Breathe deeply for 10 or 15 times and say all the above energy boosters and really mean them. Then you will see how quickly your mind recovers its sharpness and your body becomes filled with new energy and vitality. One more time, these energy boosters are, I am strong and healthy, I can accomplish anything I desire. 
I am young and vital, and my body now responds with new energy and vitality to do all my tasks today. I am happy, happy, happy. I find joy in my work, and my life sparkles with interest and happiness. I have faith in myself, my work, and my destiny. I now extend this faith to the entire world. I am successful, well-liked, and attract friends to myself. I now radiate confidence, poise, and inner power. I love everyone I meet, and they will in turn love me. I am rich as any millionaire with the gifts of mental and physical health, free estates of parks, and the golden gifts of friendship, love, peace, happiness, and beauty. Are you an efficient personality? 1. Do you jump right up in the morning when you awaken? 2. Do you organize your life, your work, your play? 3. Do you tackle unpleasant tasks rather than put them off? 4. Do you keep your financial record straight? 5. Is your environment as neat and orderly as possible? 6. Do you make out lists of things you want to do? 7. Do you live your life according to a time schedule? 8. Do you have a budget that you adhere to? 9. Do you sit down and think about your life at least an hour a day? 10. Do you have a good memory? The answers to all the above questions should be yes. This would indicate that you function on a very high plane of efficiency. However, most people cannot achieve this high degree of efficiency overnight. If you answer less than seven of the above questions, yes, then you need to work to build your mental efficiency. Rate yourself 10 points for each yes answer. 70 or more indicates fair efficiency. 80 is excellent, 90 is better than most, and 100 means you have achieved efficiency. 20 barriers you must overcome to achieve fortune. 1. Procrastination, putting things off until a better time. 2. Fear of failure. 3. Indecision, not knowing what you want or where you're going in life. 4. Confusion, chaos, and disorder in your personal life. 5. Extravagance and waste with your money, time, and energy. 6. Putting yourself in positions of failure and inferiority. 7. Being afraid of big goals, important people, and big money. 8. Vacillation, going from one thing to another without knowing what you really want in life. 9. Living under concepts of limitation, financially and otherwise. 10. Lack of faith in yourself, your talents, your future. 11. Lack of intense desire to succeed. 12. Building negative habit patterns of worry, fear, hate, jealousy, envy, and other negative emotions that short-circuit the powerhouse of your brain. 13. Failing to recognize an opportunity when it is presented. 14. Being afraid to take chances in life. 15. Failing to use your imagination. 16. Not dreaming or thinking big enough. 17. A personality that is inferior, inadequate, and self-conscious. 18. Ignorance due to lack of education. 19. Fear of trying new things because they are unfamiliar. And 20. Not understanding money and how to use it creatively. So the focus of this chapter in the book The Million Dollar Secret, Hidden in Your Mind, is on desire. We all have desires, and desires are not a bad thing, as I've said before. If you have a desire for something, it means that it's a reality in some other universe. So it's a signal that this is a real thing that you can have, that you can experience. So don't diminish your desires and don't think they're sinful or bad. It is okay to have desire. There are certain spiritual philosophies that will tell you that desire is bad. It is not bad in any way, shape, or form. The key here is that you can move beyond just the desire for fame or fortune. And then you release something that he talks about regularly, and that is the dynamic life urge. Oftentimes, this dynamic life force, this urge that is all-powerful, is initiated when you begin to think 
outside of just yourself and in particular when you think about service to others I can tell you in my own life that when I chose to find ways that I can serve as many people as possible the road opened up to me and there were literal supernatural things going on there is an absolute force that is available to you that you can utilize to find your prosperity to achieve all your dreams but you got to think outside of yourself how can I serve others even Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata came to him in that moment when he came to help this girl who was obviously blind and she wanted to play his music he could have skipped that house but he stops and goes into the house and helps her out and in that moment there is divine inspiration because he is serving her with this beautiful song what ways can you take your dream that you have now and twist it so that it is of service to others that it can aid or help others in some magnificent way this can literally give you years of your life if you have a focus on something where you can be of great service to others suddenly whatever disease or cancer you have just goes away it is a dynamic life urge and if you go back and listen to this again you'll see that it is repeated multiple times you want to initiate this dynamic life urge and this dynamic energy is released and it gives you the ability to do all the things that you want in your life so I want you to write down in the comments your blueprint of destiny I want to imagine it for you and I want you to rewrite it once a week and once again you just write a simple blueprint of the things you desire I desire money to meet my needs I want a business of my own I wish to change the nature of my work I desire my own home I want a new car whatever it is write out your blueprint read it when you wake up read it when you go to sleep write it out by hand once a week change it if you have something that you don't desire anymore then change it but this initiates this dynamic life urge if you write out in your blueprint that you want to do this business to help others or whatever it is to help my family out if you start to think of the service oriented aspect of each of your desires it magnifies this dynamic life urge that is released and it initiates incredible supernatural effects in your life miracles happen magic happens it is so powerful so Norvell gives a clear blueprint and steps that you can use to release this dynamic energy set a goal for yourself have some persons in your life that you're trying to help find work you really enjoy doing have hobbies that give you pleasure as well as relaxation find love with someone set daily goals for yourself that you're trying to achieve and each day when you start your activities say a series of suggestions you can go back and I read those powerful affirmations to initiate you and release this dynamic life urge there's a great questionnaire if you are questioning your own efficiency you can go and check and see if you're efficiently releasing this dynamic life urge and I recommend you listen to the end of this chapter the 20 barriers you must overcome to achieve fortune have you overcome these barriers it is quite simple yet it can be difficult but you have this dynamic life urge within you waiting to be released and all you need to do is to release it and you can be aided if you find some ways to think outside of just yourself for others and serving others you can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution. Mm-hmm.